All right, I'm getting set up for brazing here. So, first thing I got to do is come in and, and V out our, uh, our broken area here so we can get some braze in there. And I'm going to leave probably about a third of it, maybe a quarter of it, f for registration. It's still locking in there really nice, okay? And then I made up this little clamp here. We can clamp it down like such. And hopefully the heat won't bother that too much and it'll stay put. Okay, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm real nervous about this because, you know, we've got all these machine surfaces and I don't want to warp anything and, and, uh, and I got to keep the alignment here, so. All right, so here's the setup. So I got this all ground out and I'm going to try to just fill that whole area in with braise. <clears throat> I got these parts locked together pretty good. I just put a actually a transfer punch <laughs> to uh, make sure that the, uh, the hole is still in alignment. And then here's this side over here. Okay, we're just using our little set. I did swap out the uh, acetylene because uh, acetylene doesn't last long on these little sets. I only get like maybe five minutes, so I, I put a B tank on there. Hopefully that'll last a little bit longer. And then here's our setup over here. We're gonna we're gonna preheat with propane just to save our our expensive gases. And I'll try to get some shots here. We'll see what happens.
All right, so we're checking our run out to see if we got any warpage after we did our braze repair. So this is our high over here, okay. And so we do have, looks like 10 thousandths. This again, I gotta be careful. This lathe has plain bearings in the for the spindle, so there is end play. So I'm trying to keep the same amount of pressure on the spindle as we're checking this. Yeah, okay, so looks like about ten thousandths run out. This is the mating surface on the bull gear that are bearing hub uh, mounts on. So if we take a little off of that face, what we're going to be doing is moving the gear, this gear toward us, probably ten thousandths, okay? Alright, so looking at our exploded view, so we're going to be, the gear will be moving that way, it's just a spur gear, so the spur gear won't care if it moves over ten thousandths. That's not going to hurt anything. The, um, the adjusting mechanism that goes through for the, um, for the lead screw, worm gear, and so forth, I mean, that will, that will still be in the original position. Um, this guy, our nut, is going to move, well it'll be in the original position, but the, but the, uh, the block and pin assembly is going to move toward it ten thousandths. But this is pretty sloppy in there, I, I don't think that would be a problem, okay? Our, our drive pin, it'll be moving back with the gear ten thousandths as well, okay? Now if we look at the at the lever arm uh, and the block, so the block goes, the pin goes through the block, the block floats back and forth in the lever arm, there's really nothing that affixes that. It's, um, it's just held in place, it kind of floats, okay? So one end is connected to the ram, the other end is on the um, this equalizer arm at the bottom, which which does center center that arm, but it's adjustable, so everything just kind of floats in there. So I think by taking ten thousandths off, I don't think that's going to hurt anything, and I would rather not put it together with that run out in there. So uh, I might take half of it, take five thousandths off, see what it looks like. I mean, five thousandths is in, in, you know, in, this, in the scheme of this is, is really nothing. Um, and then uh, have another look at it. So I think that's the plan. So we'll head back over to the lathe. So one thing I wish I had done, I, I wish I had checked this for run out before doing the repair to see if it had previous existing run out or if it was from our brazing uh, operation. But too late now, we got, it is what it is. Okay, I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see, but we're set up, I got a dial indicator here on the carriage so we can tell how far we're feeding in and uh, double checked our tightness on our chuck and I did the tappy tap tap to make sure we're up against the jaws. So let's go for it. Come in and touch off. It's got a high speed steel bit in here. Okay. All right, so let's take five thousand. Lock our carriage. Okay, and I'm just going to feed by hand.
Okay, we cleaned up all the way around. That's it. That's all we're doing. <laughs> and let's just take a look at our braised job here. So I didn't, I deliberately did not do any dressing here. I left as much of the brass on here as I could. Um, you know, I wanted to keep a cap on here just to give it, you know, a little more bridging across that fracture just for extra strength. Same on this side, just left the extra material on there. Um, we do need to come in and face these ends off. We didn't quite get all the way in where we V'd out a little bit here, but I, I, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Same thing here. We almost got it filled in, but I didn't want to take the chance of any of the, the braise getting inside the bore. Okay. And I'm really happy. Our alignment came out really good. Here's a 3 8 uh, uh, drill blank. So, yeah, I mean, we're still lined up good. We have a good fit. I did have to run a reamer through there. It took quite a bit of work to get all the flux out. That flux is rock hard when it, when it cools off. It's almost like a glass. So, spent some time cleaning that, and, uh, and I did run a reamer through. Um, but the main thing is the alignment looks like it's dead on. So, really pleased. With that, I got a piece of copper wire against the cast part of our hub so that our machine surface is on against the front jaw. I would rather have it against the back jaw, but I need to be able to see what I'm doing, so it's, I got it turned this way. Uh, we used our, uh, our bolts to, uh, to line up so that we're perpendicular to the bore of, the, uh, of this boss. And I also put our drill blank in here with the 3 8 collet and just to double check that we are in alignment with that bore. So let me switch over to an end mill and we'll come in. We're just going to just take the bare minimum off here just to clean that up. Okay, I'm going to feed up with the knee. So I get better control. A little bird to knock off, but I think that'll do. Uh, I gotta flip it over. All right, I forgot to film this side, but uh, just took a very light skim, same procedure as the other side. So I'm happy with the way that turned out.